welcome back to the third birthday. We're heading straight into episode five after the events of last time. Is an overdrive system? That's indeed the case. Although it must be hard to believe. And apparently we're heading straight into, into story time. Science is never wrong. Science is never wrong. Oh, come on, man. Really? Listen to me, Aya. You're here. You're real. If you're hurt, it's okay to cry. Don't even get me started on letting your emotions Ooh, the science. Feel your wounds. Oh. I know it will. <laughs> How sweet your tears must taste. That is so creepy. Regretting what you've lost will deny you of a future. Of course, to live also means to hurt. <laughs> and you will repeatedly. That is so creepy. <laughs> A new enemy has recently been detected, trying to take the Grand Babel from the Twisted. And oh, now it's enemy? the Grand Babel. Like species or something? Yes, an intelligent species that can take the form of humans. I've dubbed them the High Ones. They're a new and powerful race. <laughs> Sounds like you gotta be high to buy into that. I presume you know him yep captain captain sus himself you don't see him for like a lot of the game but the first time i saw him at the beginning of the game i was like oh man this guy's kind of sus <laughs> there's just something about the way they portray his character at the beginning and the way he comes out being like you know you have to rely on me more it's just weird And then when you get to this point of the game, you realize, oh, okay, I was right to think that. <laughs> Ooh, um, that, um, that raise ability would be nice to have. I forgot that was a thing. Personally, if I was playing this right now, I would probably... I would probably swap out one of those, um, mm, I would probably, maybe switch out one of those energy surge things, or energy defense, with the raise ability, or the critical shot. Um, I would definitely want to get the critical shot in there, though, because that is useful. And I don't think I realized at the time that it actually was useful. Because, <laughs> I, like, I, I remember before when I was playing this, I was always concerned with getting the crossfire abilities and the abilities that trigger when you overdive into another NPC. Where there's a lot of things that you can get that, um, like power surge, energy defense that are kind of just passive boosts and then the raise thing i mean you'll see at the end of the game why that would be useful to have Yeah, so we got we got some new upgrades that we can get here. Um, nothing really too crazy, but I mean, might as well upgrade the shotgun range of weapons at some point, right? Um, and eventually, I think I I want to say it's in hard mode that you start unlocking the special weapons, um, because in my playthroughs of this, and I mean I've played through this game um, back when I was playing it around like 10, 11, 12 years ago. Um, I must have beaten this game well over 50 times, and I never once <laughs> what can unlocked I do for you? any of the special weapons, but I'm going to the Grand Battle. Story time! I'm gonna settle things with Hyde. You are, are you? has been overrun by the Twisted. Apparently. The remaining troops are waiting at the Grand Babel, but... But what? 
There are countless twisted headed towards the Grand Babel. What a shocker. Our troops have lost even in advantageous situations. You don't say. Merely making it to high boar may be a feat. I've made up my mind. I wouldn't dream of stopping you. This is my chance to examine you and your abilities. After extensive analysis, the results show that the new life forms are in no way related to the twisted we're used to seeing. They have completely different roots and are an entirely different species. And they're fighting each other. Is that what you're saying? Correct. The twisted that built the Babel and the high ones that have the ability to transform into people are fighting for the right to survive. Hide boar. If the and of course, you know, that's such a convenient plot point to just CTI, shoehorn in right at the end of the game. Oh, there's an entirely the new evolved form of these enemies that you've been fighting throughout the game, so they don't even matter anymore because the they're fighting with each other. Uh, like, system, come on, man. He's using it to go back to the past. Why? It's for reasons like that. Him. And this entire portion of the game that a lot of people just don't even acknowledge that this game exists the twisted, the high ones, and, and like I was saying like a while that's... back this game on its own would have been fine just as, as a standalone game but linking it to the Parasite Eve series is just I mean in my opinion it was a stupid idea <laughs> what can I do for you because like it, it really has extremely powerful Pretty much nothing to do with anything related to Parasite Eve other than the main character and the location. <laughs> That's about it. Yes. And although they're at war with the Twisted, that doesn't mean they'll side with us. Aya, you've fought against Twisted that resemble humans. Isn't that correct? And every time... The world changed. Those uh, were the high ones. Not really. A new race with incredible powers that even diminished those of the Twisted's queen. The original, they the, the, the first enemies that you run into in the game are all. pretty well humanoid. So that statement doesn't really make sense. Do they infect humans? It looks that way. According and the bosses store, that we fought Kyle that we ran into as people before that, the they those ones. were not humanoid they bosses. I mean, one of them was like a giant wasp. Another one was like a giant fat frog that was throwing like little mini baby tornadoes at us. Like they soon complete their transformation, but until then, it it would be impossible to tell them apart from other humans. You said the Babel is an overdive system. Are you positive? I compared the remains of the previous device with the Babel's structure. Although they differ in parts, the no kidding are the same. The one responsible for creating the CTI device is... Hide. But dun, why dun, would dun. Babel need to be so big? <laughs> <laughs> Who could have seen that little in, uh, information tidbit coming? Into the past. I know and I wouldn't have seen it coming. The size of the device and would be that's, a, that's another thing that kind of irks me about some games. The way they the way they do the storytelling, oh, right. it's just, I, I feel it. like it's lazy where the at the end of the game, or towards the end of the uh, game in the last uh, chapter, uh, chapter, they're like, oh, so you've been fighting against these things the whole game, and then bam, here's the new real final boss. This is the real big bad. to travel back in time. It's just, it's like, you couldn't write a compelling a story. Like, I, I can understand future, having a twist at the end, but uh, keep it reasonable. Don't just throw a whole new idea in yes, there with something completely exactly at a left field. It just tells me that everything in the story up to that point was pointless. <laughs> like, if your main villain isn't, sh isn't a strong enough character or a strong enough concept that you can base the entirety of the story around it, and you, and After it's it's such story, a weak development that you have to just shoehorn it in at the end after all the events already passed through. And then, well, 
You have to ask yourself if it would be compelling enough for people to actually understand the severity of with each other. Uh, all of this happened before you lost your memory. And realistically, in this game, the, the big bad of this game is not sufficiently threatening enough, I don't think. And, and there's not enough to it uh, to flesh out from like a story perspective to actually justify having it be the big bad. And that's where the, the writing in this game really flops. I mean, the writing in this game isn't really that good to begin with. It's, it's pretty... I was going to say Great mid, but that might be an Isabel. insult to some other games that are pretty mid. Um, it, it's pretty low-tier writing in this. <laughs> According to the file, but that that Isabella just was born in that just tops the cake for she me. She was the only daughter of Thelonious Cray. She died in a car accident in 2006. Wait, she was in an accident in 2006? Uh, it's strange indeed. The Babel didn't exist back then. But Cray believed that was his daughter. Something doesn't add up. Uh, Perhaps the file is incorrect. How did the High Ones come to be? Uh, I have no clue. You're lying. Uh, scientists never state anything without evidence. If you don't want to tell me, fine. Aya, did you notice anything when you were fighting the High Ones? Many things. <laughs> Memory. Huh? A memory of Eve. Oh, how fascinating. When I acquire her, uh, I mean, when <laughs> find her, can I inquire more about it? My story. You believe me when I say the world has changed? Of course. <laughs> one day you came back to us with memories I, no one else has. I really wish but that they had written his character to be so much less creepy. I can understand making him be like, you know, the awkward, quirky scientist who doesn't understand social norms. Maybe has like a little bit of autism, so that really like goes to push his um, inability to have social interactions properly. But like... They just wrote him to be such a creeper, and here's the obligatory fan service of the game. Without the idea of fan service, you tell me what was the purpose of that scene. <sighs> it's just, that's the kind of thing that you have to start throwing into your game when you know that there's no other merits that you can base sales of your game on because the story is garbage <laughs> the story's garbage the gameplay is kind of mid because like really there's nothing there's nothing like um there's nothing like groundbreaking about the gameplay you're running <laughs> around playing a third person cover shooter you you fight the same enemies throughout the game you go from room to room clearing them out and doing like small objectives I would do anything for you <laughs> that's anything. so creepy <laughs> yep here we go Coming for you, Hyde. I owe you. I'm Special Agent Aya Brea of the CTI. And my I final was gonna mission say Captain Cringe, but is about to begin. Alright. So we're you know, no messing around, just heading straight in. End of the game at level 21. Now, this is the part of the game where some things start to get annoying. No one's commanding. Some of the enemies in here can be... kind of annoying, irritating, frustrating. Not quite yet, because we're, we're still in, like, the first... I mean, we're literally in the first room. But later on, oh, man... 
There's some rooms that are kind of irritating. And I was I was trying to make use of the handgun there, but like with the handgun, there's only so much you can do. And at this point of the game, this is where the handgun really drops off because the enemies turn into just just damage sponges. You need increased firepower to deal with them, especially when you start getting like these these guys, the budget reapers. I will give them credit though cool soundtrack in this area. Like, this battle music goes hard. Alright. Not too bad, not too bad. Run, little man, run! We're just gonna get our HP back. Got a budget reaper. Tried to blow ourselves up. All right, that was that was some decent grenade placement. Get behind the cover there. It's too bad we uh, we used up all our grenades already. And you know as if this budget reaper wasn't bad enough, but you have the uh, you have the snatchers up there too. Hey, level up, level 22. I think if I had to pick an enemy that was the most annoying in the game, it would probably have to be the snatchers. That enemy made a liar out of me there, but I mean the way the snatchers work, how they just sit on the roof and just camp you, oh, they're so annoying. Budget Reaper's Toast. We deal with these uh, little bubble guys now. The uh, the upgraded version of this enemy that we're fighting now. Oh my god, they, they're they so spongy. They take so much damage. And like, they're not even hard. It's just, they're the same enemy. They're just, they like, multiplied the, the health bar by like 20. Alright, get him, get him, get him! Before he can blow you up! There we go. That guy's... Yeah, I was figured he was gonna get skewered. Okay, so we're done with that room. And other than the enemies in these areas, there is absolutely nothing going on there. Now, take note of that empty, like, pipe-looking thing that was just kind of up to our left there. It's behind us now, but there's, like, these holes in the wall that those will those will uh, come into play later. Not in this specific room, but we'll have some more of those um, just big openings in the wall that are elevated that you can't get into. That enemies will pop into. Yeah, here we go. Another marathon time. Is this is this is an annoying fight. The doors of time. Because you have these that these upgraded be banana guys, and you have to take out the uh, you have to take out the orbs. I mean, the at the end of the day, it's not the most horrible thing ever. It's just these guys just camp you. They, they and then you just get focus fired, and they stun lock you.
and in this fight there are other platforms that you can get over to. Why I'm not shooting at these guys, I don't know. I mean, these guys, realistically, their HP pool isn't that crazy. Oh, I think I was trying to restore some HP. We're going to lose our cover soon, though. Um, or we just die, because that idiot pushed us out of the way. When, when they start spitting those bubbles at you, I feel like just staying under the cover is the best way to go about it. All right, one down. And of course, now we get flying enemies that come in and launch projectiles at us, as if these projectiles from these enemies weren't bad enough on their own. Yep, I knew that was going to happen. I, I don't think there's a really good way to go about this, other than the fact that I wasn't making any use of the sniper rifle. And I totally forgot, I it, it would appear, that I was not paying attention to the fact that we need to get rid of the orbs. Because the, the enemies are not what we're focused on here. It's the orbs and then the enemies. Alright. Ooh, a new gun. Oh boy, two budget reapers and a, a banana peel elephant. This is this is where things get they can get pretty wild, because those budget reapers have no problem taking out the barricades. <laughs> They're just absolutely ruthless. And this, um, the first couple times I played this, this was an area that was uh, a pretty big difficulty spike because they don't really. It's not that they don't prepare you for what's coming, it's that what's coming is what you've dealt with up to this point. It's just the area that they put you in and how fast the enemies can take down your cover, it's just, it can be so overwhelming all at once. And now you can see we're starting to run out of ammo for certain weapons. And there goes one of our covers. Okay. Flying enemies dealt with. Get behind the cover, dude. Not in front. And of course, you can't get an angle on him from here. Target acquired. 
it is useful though to be able to sit over here and just camp the enemy and they, there's literally nothing that enemy can do to you from over here. Hey, we got a cross healing. But yeah, you basically just, if, if you really want to, you can just camp from over here and just do crossfires. I think we're going to wrap this up pretty soon, though. I mean, realistically, there's not too much left to him. That should, yeah, that should be the end of that one. And then we just got to deal with the banana peel guy. Liberation? Yes, please! I think this may be... Is, it, is this the last enemy or no? No, a couple more. Why? Because we didn't take out the orb yet. Because apparently I forgot what I was doing. Or forgot what the the uh, the objective was. You, you can see how not useful the shotguns are in instances like that. They can be good for, like, enemy groupings, but you don't really typically get those. And now I think... Um, I don't know if we have to wait for another another uh, reinforcement to spawn in before we can we can take care of that orb but yeah so you can see the the uh, that's I think that's the B power stat on the uh, on the handgun that that really boosts the overdive like that because look at how quick that that prompt com comes up that's part of why I like the handguns okay so I think this should be the last enemy Oh, come on. All right. Orbs are toast. And we got ourselves a safe room. And I think this is where we are going to call it a day. So, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like these, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching.